Big changes are happening in our kids' science classes. This is the first year of full implementation of the next generation science standards. It's a major shift in teaching and learning that has been overwhelming for a lot of districts, but the transition has been a lot smoother for JCPS, thanks in no small part to the generosity of one of our most significant corporate partnerships in our district's history. Did it grow? It did. Are you sure? We're learning evidence of life. So they're given five different materials. This is not. Some are living, some are non-living. Your parents' science class. We're doing an experiment over different periods of time. We tested over 10 minutes and 24 hours. There were different outcomes and really different outcomes. What's different about what's happening in this Jefferson County traditional middle school class isn't the experiment, it's the experience. Not long ago, this lesson in Jessica Freeland's seventh grade class and most JCPS schools was confined to a life science book. And it would be probably three pages with pictures and just a definitions of uh, what an organism is and the requirements from life for life, and that would be the end of it. In inquiry-based learning, that really is flipped. Inquiry-based learning, the cornerstone of instruction for the new Next Generation Science Standards, or NGSS. Engagement, exploration, explanation, elaboration, and evaluation. Students as scientists, answering questions through doing. Then they use what they did in that investigation, guided by their teacher, to pull it together, look for trends and patterns in the data or the observations, and draw some evidence-based claims around a question that they've been asked. So it's much more learning from experiences, pulling in their real life experiences, and then listening to each other as scientists. The changes in teaching required for NGSS are new concepts in classrooms across the country, but not so new inside JCPS classrooms, thanks to a corporate champion for education. General Electric sought to answer the national question of how to create critical thinkers who can fill vacant and soon to be created jobs in science, technology, engineering and mathematics or STEM fields. In 2005, the GE Foundation awarded JCPS a $24.5 million Developing Futures in Education grant. Are you getting more air in here? It empowered JCPS to engage in a rigorous curriculum and provided invaluable professional development for teachers. The two is walking its way. The grant eliminated a potentially colossal barrier, funding and research for materials needed for inquiry-based learning science notebooks for recording observations and drawing conclusions, pertinent standards-based text, and of course, the experiments, like the FOSS modules used at JCTMS. Because of our GE grant, we have a K-8 uh, module-based or kit-based uh, science curriculum. Um, we have a science warehouse that repurposes those materials and sends them out to teachers on a just-in-time basis. There was so much research done to develop the FOSS modules that GE adopted that it supports the NGSS Foundation in the way it's structured, designing solutions and communicating information. I'm extremely thankful that we were given the opportunity to partner with GE and that because of that partnership, that support, both financially and human capacity and also expectations for high levels um, of teaching and learning that we have been able to do for science instruction what most districts in the, the United States have not been able to do. This is what it looks like before 24 hours. NGSS Aligned Learning is more engaging. Because you remember it more than just like going from the textbook. NGSS content is more challenging and more in depth. But young scientists like these have the support they need to find the answers to the questions our world has yet to ask. It's the biggest impact of anything I've ever seen tried to be implemented in the system. And I, I can't imagine ever going back away from it. 